virtual campground is a community of RVers. We gather around the campfire to share stories, information, and travel tips that help you on your next adventure. Your camp hosts, Deborah and Barry Benton, are full-time RVers in search of quaint bookstores, cozy coffee shops with great Wi-Fi, and epic photography opportunities, all to share with you. So pull up your chair and join us in the virtual campground. Welcome to the virtual campground. We're so glad you are here. Uh, we are still here in, um, where are we? We are in Naughty Camus. Pine RV Resort in Camas, Utah. Yes. So. Can I just say, I really enjoyed that opening movie. It's like we get to see all these cool pictures of where we've been. We, right. We've done a lot of things. We've seen well, a lot of cool It's almost five things. years on the road full time. And we've met some incredible people. Yes. And we've seen some amazing things. We really have. We've yeah. been really blessed. We're very blessed. So thank you for being a part of that. And we've got a really fun show. Actually, we're coming to you via the miracle of Memorex. Is that Memorex? a friend? Yeah, no one knows I, that's that anymore, gotta right? It's so old. Well, some of <laughs> our regulars Jamie? know it because that's they're right. old like us. That's right. So, but yeah. High five no. me, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy and Dave. Um, so yeah, we we uh, we are recording this because we are both in in different places. I'm in Salt Lake City. Well, technically I'm here now, but I will be in Salt Lake City, and then Deborah's going to be in Camas. So I'm yeah. going to be here, mm -hmm. but we decided we would do this ahead of time, and that way I can be in the chat and just chat along yeah. with everybody. Yeah. So and you'll be working. That's right. So, yeah. So, there'll be cocktail parties those that, at this point. <laughs> those that didn't see where we are, Camas, Utah, and this Naughty Pines, really nice little RV resort out uh, outside of town. And uh, we've really enjoyed the snow. And uh, I'm sure by the time this plays, the no, snow will be virtually gone. No, it's supposed to snow again on Monday. Oh, so, right. it might be, might, it might be might more, snow. more snow. More snow, yeah. Um, and then uh, that's a view going down the road near where we are. So, it's just. Just really gorgeous, that beautiful view, place. I was actually going, coming back from a store and had to pull over and take that picture. It was just stunning. It looks like something out of a postcard or like on one of those maps of the ski resorts that you see with the runs. It just, it doesn't look real. No. And you know, that's one of those things Britt and Josh said in the interview we're going to play here shortly that they made a promise to each other when they were moving into Big Fork that they would never get tired of looking at that scenery. And I feel, feel the same way. If I moved here, I would try to do whatever I could to not get tired of that and enjoy it every day. Well, it's even, not even if you lived, moved here. I mean, we, we go around to so many beautiful places mm. that sometimes you have to almost remind yourself right. to appreciate. Take, take the time yeah, and, take and it appreciate it. Because it's, you know, and, and it gets to a point where you almost have a degree of beauty because <laughs> you've seen so many great things. I mean, I'm horrible about, you know, go to a national park and they're all uniquely incredible. Mm -hmm. But you do nine of them in one year and you kind of go, eh, I kind of saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Which is terrible. <laughs> so I have to remind myself, no, no, That's stop. Right. Be here in this moment present. Be present. That's, That's right. exactly right. <laughs> so you talk, You mentioned Josh and Britt. Yes. So should we tell people who they are? Let's do that. <laughs> okay. Well, Josh and Britt, and that's Walter, by the way. Oh, yes. Um, the cat is Walter. Yes. Josh and Britt are husband and wife. They, um, they moved all their um, Airstreams. They have five vintage Airstreams and a couple of teardrops and some cabins now at Flathead Lake Resort. And they've been running that over there for three years now it's a really cool lakeside property mm -hmm. right on um the flathead lake gorgeous and, um, uh, gorgeous area fun people highly recommend hanging out with them so yeah so josh and Britt have been at flathead lake resort now for several years it's sort of like and you'll hear it we'll, we'll let them tell the story about yeah. how they ended up there but we did meet Britt and josh in gunnersville mm -hmm. and um they were full-timers we honestly the way we met Britt and josh it was during the COVID. Yeah. The COVID year. The COVID. And um, the start of COVID. And I was walking on a walk and I saw they were in this vintage Airstream. Mm -hmm. And a there motor was coach. a an yeah, motor, motor coach. Which is very unusual. Yeah. And I saw this stuffed cat. <laughs> I honestly believed it was a stuffed cat in the front of this the window. He is you a know. gorgeous 
and he One then of the he moved. Cats I've ever seen. <laughs> and I was like, oh, not stuff. But he is beautiful. Mm -hmm. He's a beautiful cat. Very sweet. Um, you might even get to see him in a picture at the Fourth of July. Oh, that's right. Um, mm -hmm. But yes. Uh, so anyway, he he's a gorgeous cat, and that's what attracted us to the camper. And then we met Joshua Britt and fell in love with them as yeah. well. Yeah. So sweet couple. All yeah. right. So shall we roll it? Yes, let's roll the tape. They okay. are here to speak because they are. Let me just say this: we wanted to interview them because after three years of being in that area, mm -hmm. they've they become the experts. experts because right. they have become part of that community. That's right. Really been impressive. So yeah. here you go. All right. Cool. We'll be right back. Welcome to the virtual campground, Britt and Josh. So glad to see you. Thanks for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to be here and just so great to see you two again. It's so great to see your faces. Yes. I know. <laughs> yeah, I looked. We interviewed you. The last time we interviewed was two years ago. So Wow, two years. Yep. That's last amazing. time you were on your, when we did the tour of your RV. And you look exactly the same. You do. <laughs> <laughs> we look exactly the same. Aw, thank you. <laughs> Gunnersville. You too. <laughs> yeah, in Guntersville, exactly, in Guntersville. Okay, yeah, but we was, wanted uh, to we talk was, to you. Oh, I'm sorry, go uh, ahead. Say that again. You said we were in Maxwell, the 87 Air. Oh, we were right. in Maxwell, exactly. our 1987 Air. Yeah, just moved back into him, so he's, oh, he's wow. still home. Oh, wow, mm -hmm. awesome, awesome. Oh, that's right, because you were doing some renovation on him. That's right, I remember that. Okay, but <laughs> since then, since Guntersville, you have moved to Montana and you have been there as the overseers of Flathead Lake Resort, right? So tell us how that happened. Yeah, so we hit this area of Montana. We were in our fourth year of full time in it on the road. And we just hit this part of Montana as part of the journey um, in 2020. I mean, we'd wanted to hit Montana from like day one, getting on the road, because you're on the road in an RV, you gotta go to Montana. But we just would always let life and work get in the way and then, COVID hit and took the, the work side out of the way because we worked large events and things like that that were all shut down. So we're like, no excuse now, we got to make Montana. And we just hit this area, um, literally had hit this area in August of 2020, had a campground booked in Washington in September of 2020. And as we always tell people, we still haven't made Washington. <laughs> uh, we just totally fell in love. and we, we were so enamored with this place. We were here for 30 days. We were so enamored. I hesitate even saying this because we feel to this day, we feel terrible. We forgot to cancel our reservation in Washington. <laughs> oh that's like, like how- Like a three week reservation. Like Not just like a couple days, and we, like yeah, a big reservation. We're pretty sometimes, or like we yeah. don't, we don't not show up to our places. Like that's, it. we, we just were swept off our feet. <laughs> and specifically what part yeah. of Montana is it that swept you off your feet? Uh, so we are in a little town called Big Fork, population of around 5,000 people. Um, it's a very spread out area. We're the northwest corner section of what's Flathead Lake and uh, 45 minutes south of Glacier National Park, the west entrance. Nice. What a beautiful area. We are very blessed to be here. It's <laughs> amazing that we stumbled into this place that we'd never heard of before <laughs> and i think just a couple of things that capture our, our hearts i mean flathead lake is just this huge crystal clear freshwater lake it is the let's see if i can get this right the biggest natural freshwater lake west of the mississippi no. you got <laughs> so it. there are a few disclaimers here but bottom line <laughs> it is tremendously large and it's crystal clear and it's got those colored pebbles that you see in a lot of pictures of montana and the other cool thing about this area is, you know, Britt mentioned our town of four or 5,000. Well, in the valley, you have a bunch of these little Montana towns that each have their own unique character. Not a lot of chains around for the most part. You know, it's a lot of little mom and pops and things like that. And uh, so just a really fun, unique and special vibe to the whole area. And of course, just tons of nature, hiking, streams, you know, lots of wildlife to, to check out. And then there's Glacier National Park on top of that all. Yeah. Just, just, yeah, just, just this little park. Yeah. So do you make it up to Glacier very yeah, often? Just, you know, we don't go as often as I wish we would, but at the same time, I think we go more frequently than some other locals. Um, we really enjoy going um, in the spring and the fall um, and also the winter. So really um, it's very crowded during the summer and there's a reservation system like a lot of the parks have now, but we uh, we did explore a new part of Glacier National Park last year. We finally made it to the East Glacier 
um, more specifically the Many Glacier uh, area, which is um, quite a bit more remote and hard to get to. And we visited our, I think it was probably our first um, actual glacier that we've like hiked up to. So that yeah. was a really epic hike, um, very hard, but worth every bit. And um, so, yeah, we, we make it. There's a little town called Polebridge, which is pretty famous as well. They have really great concerts there. Um, I think almost every night during the summer, zero cell service, zero Wi-Fi. There's zero connectivity of basically any kind in that little town. And they kind of pride themselves on that. Um, so it's 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 up there. It's it's become more populated and visited, but it's also very remote still. Um, yeah, so we, we also enjoy camping in Apgar, which is West Glacier. Um, we camped there about a year ago this time, um, which is was amazing. We had the park almost to ourselves. It was really beautiful. So yeah, we, we do make it. I'd love to go more, but I'm, I'm happy that we've been as many times as we have. Well, I mean, to your point, I am sure people that have lived there much longer than you guys have not been there as often as you have, just because you get kind of right. used to it when it's right there in your neighborhood. Yeah. But I'm glad to hear y'all, y'all make it up yeah. there. And what do you have a favorite hike? One thing that Britton and I promised when we got here, you know, there's this one view where you're cresting over a hill and you look over Flathead Lake and it's a common, it's like our normal road that we ride down. And we looked at each other when we first got here, we were like, this view of this lake at the top of this hill, this never gets old. This is so <laughs> beautiful and so unique and so special. We can never let we this get old. Get we old. can't lose this sense of wonder. No. And so, you know, kind of coming back to Glacier, we've, we've had that mentality from, from day one of, you know, no matter how long we're here, we got to hang on to that sense of wonder and awe. And I think we've done pretty well with that. <laughs> but that tangent aside, uh, Glacier, I would say, yeah, our favorite hike when we were in Mini Glacier, which Mini Glacier is like, you know, the pictures you see where Glacier National Park looks like it's straight out of Switzerland, probably taken in Mini Glacier. And uh, so it's just a spectacular area. But one of the hikes there, the one we took to the glacier, it's Grinnell Glacier, Grinnell glacier. is one of the more famous ones in Glacier. And just the things you see along the way and then the reward of walking up to that glacier at the end of it, it's, it's just otherworldly and unlike anything I've, I've ever experienced. We did see our first grizzly. Our first and only grizzly was in yeah. wow. Many Glacier. That was really amazing um very exciting it was far enough away then it got a little scary and then it, and then it turned out okay um but that was pretty awesome and then you know for those so that's east glacier and for those visiting the west west side because it is hard and it takes another it takes time to get to the east side um you know it's very it's a very popular hike um avalanche lake is oh, yeah. it's remarkable i think i've done that one four times and it never gets old and i I hope to do it a couple times this summer. It is, it's another destination hike. You end at Avalanche Lake. And if you take the extra 15 minutes to go to the far end of the lake that most hikers do not go to, you have it to yourself. I'm giving all my secrets away. <laughs> um, it is absolutely remarkable. You're sitting in this beautiful, freshly melted, you know, avalanche waters and it's like green and teal and clear and gorgeous and you're surrounded by these mountains and if you're brave enough you can take a really cold swim i've done that Be once oh, wow. <laughs> it was worth it was like it was the most incredible thing i've ever done that, wow, that sounds amazing sounds cold yeah. <laughs> exciting yeah so <laughs> outside of glacier because you guys are both really active people so outside of glacier are there a lot of great places to hike in the flathead valley area there are tons and, and you know one thing i share with with folks our guests a lot is you know you think about really anywhere they're putting a national park i mean very rarely is that just an isolated sliver they're usually picking out a segment of just a large wonderful natural area and that's completely true here i mean just to give you an example out the door of the resort we have what's called the bob marshall wilderness which is just hundreds of thousands if not a million plus acres of national lands with tons of hiking trails and just a variety of places to go. But for us, um, you know, honestly, we, we have a little hiking trail in town that runs right along the Swan River and gives you great views of mountains and a, and a river. You know, there, there are things like that that are just all over the place um, that are really fun to do. If you go up north of us to Whitefish, which is where one of the big ski mountains is in the, in the summer, they're doing mountain biking down that, but they have a ton of mountain, mountain biking trails around Whitefish around here. Um, so just really the whole valley is kind of, uh, you know, along the same lines of, of Glacier in the sense of a lot of mountains, streams, really cool hikes, um, lots of unique places to go. And then on top of that, you've got the lake 
And there are all of these state parks uh, all around the lake as well, where you can camp right on the beach, essentially, if you wanted to. But those parks are also going to have, you know, some really cool hikes and different different activities. Um, one that's just up the road from us called Wayfarers has these hikes that take you up on these bluffs to where you can just look out over the lake. Um, so that's, that's more of a walk than a hike. More of a walk than a hike. That's fine. <laughs> but, but it's cool. Some people just like, like walks. Some <laughs> walks are good. That, that that makes it more inclusive. It takes yeah, two like minutes. <laughs> um, Tool Basin as well. Tool Basin is another really well known area. Uh, Strawberry Lake is a hike we took once, where you're just you know you're hiking and you're rewarded with one of those just kind of pristine alpine lakes at the end of your end of your hike. And so there are a lot of different places that you can get into hikes like that. So yeah. yeah, for those looking to come to the area, Jewel Basin has a few different trailheads at which you know all trails would describe you know what the, kind of what their preference is. But that's um, that's kind of like uh, the area where a lot of trails um, spur from. Yeah. Perfect. So something for every skill level, yeah. really. Every skill level, wide variety of things you can you can choose from. And I do remember when we were we came up and visited you guys. And Britton, you took me somewhere and we paddleboarded. Where, what, what was that lake or river? It was a river. Yeah. Stream. Did we do, we did the Swan River. <laughs> yeah, we did. Oh my right? gosh. I was going to say, one point yeah, I yeah. fell off my paddleboard and I had the hardest time getting back up because the current was going, that area, the current was going pretty strongly. <laughs> Yeah, we, we had a similar incident last year. I let him come on my paddleboard and um, we uh, didn't follow the wave the way we should have. And, um, that was that was my fault. Our phones, my fault. our phones and our food were underwater for about oh, 90 seconds. I can't believe they didn't oh my swim away or get ruined. It was good. Um, yes, that is the Swan River tubing, rafting. It's amazing. I'm so glad you brought that up and remember. I love that you like remember that experience um, <laughs> because that, that's a really beautiful, um, it's just like, it's a really great way to unplug. And if you go at the right time of the year, the waters do slow down and it's just a really great, for, I mean, for us, unplug because we're constantly connected. Um, just two hours of floating down the Swan River. So there is a, a local um, market gas station that actually has a little hut outside. It's the Ferndale Market. Uh, Ferndale is just two minutes away from Big Fork. And um, for $20, I don't know if the price is going to change, but for $20, they give you the tube and they drop you off and pick you up. And it's about a two to two and a half hour float. And um, beautiful, just like calm, you know, depending on time of, year, time of the year, calm float through through the Swan Mountains and um, views that you won't see while you're hiking or while you're driving. Um, so getting that river view perspective is so special. I remember. It was wonderful. Yeah, and you get to see some really great houses, as you remember, that <laughs> you cannot see from any road. Yeah. So seeing yes. those homes on the river is Yes, they make you very envious. They're very nice. Yeah, they're <laughs> Some of them are quirky, but fun. I hear the mosquitoes are worse on the river, so, you know. Mm. <laughs> you know. Okay, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> feel better about not living on the river. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It'll bother you on a float for the record. That's right, exactly. You're moving. <laughs> You're moving, they don't bother yeah. you. Exactly. Only if you live <laughs> so okay, so we are hope we are bringing our group of people Camp Carbonium to the area. We're very excited about it. And so tell us a couple of your favorite spots. You know, we're staying up in Kalispell, so some of your favorite spots to go to eat and drink. Well, in Kalispell, you got to check out Sacred Waters. It's it's a brewery, um, really really good beers. Some of the some of the best known beers in the area. Their food's fantastic, you know. And they in the past they've had like a food truck there, but they've actually started over the past year or so have really taken on their own game with food. And so that's just a really fantastic spot. Top tip as well. I mean, I know we're all RVers, so we're all probably RVing in. However, just something to bear in mind, if you're hitting the airport, or even if you're not, Sacred Waters is up close by the airport. And if you have a ticket from a flight, they'll give you a few bucks off a of beer. So just something to remember if you know nice. anyone's testing the waters of RVing. But anyway, it's right by the airport. So that's a really fun spot. But then in town, um, you have quite a few really good brew. brew really, uh, any of the breweries I can think of offhand in Kalispell have really good food um, to boot. So that, that's a pretty cool thing. Uh, you know, like Bias Brewing is, is a really good one. 
Um, and then there are several really good tap houses like right downtown Kalispell. Downtown Kalispell is a pretty cool historic downtown um, that, that you can check out. So that's a fun spot. Uh, then if you go up to Whitefish, you're going to have a, a series of other uh, you know, breweries and tap houses and really good restaurants. Um, you can try some Cajun food, some really good Italian spots up at Whitefish as well. And then they have Bonsai Brewing. There we oh, go, because they have a brewing. big Bonsai tree. Yeah. Um, Bonsai Brewing is absolutely, well, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I'm pretty sure it's it's Kenny and April, I would say. It's in their top three, three of breweries in the Flathead Valley. Um, you know, same deal, going to have great food, has a really big outdoor lawn where you can sit and Beautiful enjoy beers yard. and just kind of hang out in the yard. There's another a brewery here in Montana called Jeremiah Johnson that's gotten pretty popular. And that's in Whitefish. They, and they have now a place in Whitefish where they brew a lot of their beers, and it's right in the main downtown uh, stretch. So you have those options there. And then kind of expanding out to the area, if you run over to Lakeside, the interesting thing about Lakeside is, you know, here in Big Fork, we're backed up against the mountains and then we have the view out over the lake. In Lakeside, they get the view out over the lake into the mountains. So it's it's just a, a completely different side of the lake. But Lakeside's really cool, has a really good uh, little restaurant place, um, Tamarack, Harbor Grill. Tamarack Brewing. And Tamarack well. Brewing is another really well-known one. You got to check out Tamarack Brewing if you're here. That's one of the most For popular For the kids, the if there's any kids um, or those who don't drink, Tamarack Brewing makes a really great root beer. Yeah. Nice. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. And so, yeah, Tamarack Brewing, you have Harbor Grill over there. And the other cool thing about Lakeside is they actually have a town park um, that really has an expansive beach on the lake. So you can hang out, look out over the lake, look into the mountains. They have these docks that are going out there. If you're brave enough at the end of September, you can take a jump into the lake. It'd probably still be all right. Just be ready to get out pretty fast. <laughs> um, but just really that's right in the middle of town, right near, you know, Tamarack and all that stuff. So that's a really cool spot of Lakeside. And I'll save the best for last, and I'm probably biased on it. Our hometown of Big Fork, um, you've got Flathead Lake Brewing here. You've got Whistling Andy Distillery. Um, we've just had a new brewery come into town, and I hate that I don't know their name. Oh, they're something not goat. Goat, something goat. Something goat. Oh, they're they, not. They're not open yet. They're waiting for their uh, yeah. their license. Nice. They came in from somewhere a little east of us, so they've been brewing for a while, and then they moved into the area. So you, you've got that. Um, Flathead Lake Brewing has great food too, by the way. And then last but not least, right by Flathead Lake Resort, we have Sip of Montana, a little tap house that if you just want to get the whole you know, gamut and uh, test out quite a few beers and some good food, pizzas and things like that, Sip of Montana is a great place and you can come see us in Woods Bay. <laughs> that's, that's like a month's worth of eating All and drinking. Kinds. That's exactly right. Well, yes. and Ocala okay, is the one that samples the drinks. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I'll do like a I'm not much of the drink. I drink the mm. I drink the root beer. It's called Training Wheels. It is really good root beer. It's solid. <laughs> the other thing I really remember from that area, especially hanging out with you guys, is um, how many community events and mm. wonderful like everybody coming together kind of activities there were. Of course, we were there for the incredible July Fourth Parade. Oh my gosh! And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but I also remember there being, there was the concerts park, was like concert. every Monday and there were, yeah, that park we went mm -hmm. to that had the concert. So does that continue into September? So yes, it does, but things do start to taper down. I would say like after Labor Day, um, but there is so much to do during the season, like during like the uh, June through August season, there's so much to do that people are like, overwhelmed sometimes because there's too much it's like you, you can't do everything so september is a, a good time to still get a really great flavor of everything going on in the area the live music the food the activities the events it's just instead of having 10 10 ones on the calendar you might <laughs> actually be able to fit the things in that you want to do um so yeah the season does start to go slow down however um that is in our opinion that's a a huge plus and a huge bonus because um it is very crowded during the high season so september is a especially end of september is a fantastic time to be here um the park no longer has the reservation system the kids are back in school um the crowds are gone so it's amazing and there's still the events there's the weather's still great we were blown away when we moved here how much live music there is um 
here in yeah. here in Big Fork alone, seven nights a week, every night, of the, <laughs> like every week of the summer, is, there's live music at multiple places. Um, it's the same for Whitefish and Columbia Falls and Kalispell. It's it's the same across the Flathead Valley. Um, yeah, and then there's events in you know multiple events in all the towns. So art fairs and craft fairs are a big thing. Um, restaurant weeks are a big thing in the different towns where like uh, for example ours is coming up in about a week no it's no, coming up in two days. days um so the taste of big fork so we'll have about 40 restaurants bringing their you know one or two special dishes to sample out to everyone participating and then i do believe other towns do similar things as well um there's winter events, summer events. There's just constantly, there, there's an, an abundance for, for so many small towns that have a five to 7,000 population and then Kalispell, which I think is around 20,000 for so many small areas around, there is an abundance of things to do all the time. That's what, that's what I remember. And then, and you're right, the live music, we were amazed how much live music there was. And this was even right after COVID? Is that yeah. right or right before? Right, right <laughs> I don't around, remember right around now. But 2021, 2021 I think. So. Yeah, so not long after. So I mean, not really, long. it was it was amazing. Now, one of our favorite places to go with the live music was, of course, Max's, which is like yeah, the coolest is. grocery store I've ever been to. Max's Market, right? Max's Market, right? Yeah. They yes, still do live that, music there? Oh my gosh, do they ever. And they're just going to kick it up a notch this year. Um, they're really trying to focus more on that as well. Um, being so small, they're not going to be doing it seven nights a week, but they are going to still focus on like, I think two to three times a week. Um, but then they also, um, they are, you're right. They say are a very, um, very well curated small market grocery area. Um, but they're really going to, they're actually doing kind of a um, a brand change or brand adjustment and making some changes. They've hired, I think at least three chefs this year. Um, so they're going to be popping out a ton of like freshly made foods, even mm -hmm. out of their kitchen. Um, we've gotten to sample some of the things I love that. Um, I mean, they, they need feedback. So they're like, here, tell me what you think about our, <laughs> tell me what you think about our falafel bowl. We just had a falafel bowl for lunch yesterday. Um, so, I mean, they've hired some chefs to really come in and amp things up to a whole new level and, um, create more of like a dining experience um and and curate that space that you know allows people to hang out listen to music read a book um they also are a wine and uh a wine and beer bar and then um, a cafe as well so they've got baristas there it's it, for for such a small space they have an incredible amount of flavors um curated wares from not only Big Fork, the, the Flathead, Montana, but also globally, they're really, they're kind of like artisan style wares is also going to be kind of a new focus for them. Um, so a really special place. And then the music is just a whole new level. Like just, it just adds to everything they already do. Yep. Mm -hmm. they, they, it was amazing. We went there for brunch one morning. I remember Sunday. Oh my gosh. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. I, love, so. I love your memory. I love that we were able to. <laughs> Around. I agree, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. And I, I recall they had a good chai tea, if I recall. I mean, we helped them. Yeah. Go. <laughs> and they had the best the kombucha. Valley leads on people, on everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so we, we need to get you guys some of their pizza this year. Oh, my it, God. And it's right. made. If we have to. They're, they're, <laughs> they're making their pizza on a sourdough bread that's actually made here in Big Fork. Nice. Wow, that's Very exciting. Cool. Okay, I can't wait. So, and and we're excited because we're actually going to get there and be there like a whole month. So, I'm very excited that we're going to be in the area. Yeah. So, for the folks that are coming that haven't been there before, and of course, they're coming for Camp Carbidium, which is a long weekend, but they might want to extend their stay. What do you think is a good length of time that they could get? really to know the area so there's there's kind of the the ideal and then kind of things in between too i mean ideally if you could get a couple weeks before and a couple weeks after uh i think that would be amazing so you're saying a month total i'd say a month total yeah if you, if you could pull it off that's like perfect world that's perfect world right yeah. perfect world um, <laughs> because you know then you're going to get kind of that last two weeks of september which is a really fun time you know everything's still open the crowds are lower you can get into you know really anywhere you want to go there's still a lot going on um it's just a it's a an easier pace to kind of take things in the first two weeks of october have been some of my favorite times here too i mean that's when you can get a taste of the fall as the leaves start to turn and things like that as well 
And so that's just a really fun time to be here. Well, everything is still open and things like that. You get more towards October 15th beyond weather can get a little unpredictable. But So if that's like the perfect length of yes. time, what's maybe an ideal like minimum amount of time if somebody has to be somewhere? Are you asking me? I'm, I'm interviewing him. You guys- <laughs> <laughs> I took the ideal world. You take the real world. So, so I've, I've, five days would be enough to like rush things. Seven days would be kind of more perfect if there is a limited time span. And that's that's beyond Camp Carpadium um, to really explore the area. Five days is doable. Um, visit some local towns, go to Glacier once or twice, um, but seven days is a good number. Yeah. Was that, that was a really long answer yeah. to the question. No, I think that, no, that no, was perfect. Good. And I agree with you. I think we either, we were there a few, well, I think we were only we there, were there supposed to be two. two we weeks, extended, we extended it. Another yeah. One. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and it still wasn't enough. Uh, right. So now we're going back and we're going to be there for like, I think a whole month. Mm-hmm. In fact, yep. maybe a little bit long, maybe five weeks. Cause we're going to stay one week after Camp Carp ADM as well. So, and then we're staying at the Rocky Mountain High up in Kallis, Kalispell. Um, for anybody that's coming to the area and maybe doesn't want to stay at Rocky Mountain, maybe wants to go. Because Kalispell is a little further north than you guys. Are there campgrounds that you would recommend for someone that might want to stay someplace one week and then come to Kalispell or vice versa or something? Yeah, let's see. So there's a couple. I'm going to have you think about the one with the Sunflower Cafe while I um, talk about Outback. Yeah. Um, Because he might have a better memory than I do. But Outback Montana RV is here in Big Fork. Um, And it's actually the only RV campground we have here in Big Fork. Um, I'm questioning myself, but I think that's accurate. Uh, so that's really close access to a couple state parks, um, Flathead Lake, and uh, obviously everything we just talked about. And then there's a great place up um, two minutes outside of the West Glacier entrance. Do you recall the name of I it? I do. It's literally just called Glacier Campground. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even remember that. But if you search <laughs> Glacier Campground, it's going to pop up a few, but this one is actually called Glacier Campground. And the way to confirm it, is it's got this little spot uh, it, like within the park called the Sunflower Cafe, which is a really, really popular, really, really well known. I mean, check out the reviews, like great food, great hangout, outdoor space that's within that that campground. And so that's a really fun spot to go. Uh, just top tip, they don't, they, they do it like the old campgrounds used to. So they don't have septic hookups at every site. They just have central shower houses and dump stations. There's just something to be aware of. But still, your location and the peacefulness of the place and the Sunflower Cafe and the people running it puts it in the top top of our book. And then I would say we we don't know much about this place, but over in Lakeside, there yeah. is um, one other, I think Lakeside also only has one RV park. Um, it's it's uh it's run with the harbor grill so i don't recall what the actual campground is called but it's the harbor it's like the harbor grill rv campground um same business different name but um that's a that's an area uh, that's an rv park that would actually give you the mountain view josh was Mm -hmm. talking about um just the opposite side of the lake so that's kind of kind of gives you the full circle there perfect perfect that's perfect yeah and so anything else that we missed that you think people have to know about flathead valley area that would make them just want to come. Generally speaking, getting to that time of year, late September and especially early October, a lot of the campgrounds will have a period of time where they'll open without reservations and things like that. Whereas, you know, a lot of them like the reservations in July are going to be booked up full. But in a lot of these cases, in those times of years, you can just roll in and camp at some absolutely spectacular spectacular places in Glacier. That was how we got into mini Glacier. You know, that campground's going to be booked solid for a year or so in advance if you're talking July or August. But in this time of year, you know, a lot of times you can roll in with just some proper planning. We had to roll in early, but we were able to roll in and camp. And so that's a big thing that, that I would definitely look at. Um, I definitely want to throw out Quinn's Hot Springs. Oh, gosh, yes. Um, so it's an hour and a half southwest of us. But for anyone who wants to take a little day trip or who's coming from that direction, um, I do believe it's part of the Lolo National Forest, mm-hmm. which Lolo is huge and like one of the most incredible national forests I've, we've ever been through. But Quinn's Hot Springs is just outside of a town called Hot Springs. Um, it is a resort style hot springs. They have seven pools, I believe. So ranging from the cold plunge to the six hots. Um, they do book, so they have day passes um, or overnight in their in their cabins, which is amazing. But for anyone watching who might want to go to a Quinn's Hot Springs, um, they do require, like they sell out. So day, uh, day passes need to be booked, I'd say like three to four weeks in advance, if not even longer. Um, so it is a plan ahead sort of thing, but it is worth every bit. You get four hours for $18. 
and like it is luxury yeah. and the locker room is amazing and the pools are amazing the pools just got rebuilt two two three years ago so for those who love hot springs um quins is amazing perfect One course direction town of hot springs it's outside the town of paradise, paradise. montana which tells you everything you need to know yep. about the area <laughs> <laughs> paradise montana uh, kind of a uh, redundant right yeah. paradise i know yeah, yeah, yeah. But they just went for it <laughs> <laughs> all right well that you guys i knew you would be the right people to ask yep. about that area oh. i knew it so um i do want one more question of course i want to ask about your place that you oversee the flathead lake resort tell folks just a little bit about it i know it's not like big rig um <laughs> i can't bring my rig there but tell them about it yeah so we are a 1950s roadside motel and um campground so we are um we do have four airstreams um that are stationary. So that's that's why I say campground with quotes. We are not a pull in, pull out, but we are located on Flathead Lake Resort. So we have private lake access to our, our beautiful beach. We're so lucky to have it. And um, for those visiting the area who maybe um, don't have an RV and need a place to stay, we have hotel rooms, studio cabins, ranging up to the Airstreams and then even a two bedroom cottage that sleeps five people. Um, and then for those who maybe are coming in the RV, but have friends and family coming to visit, it, um, who don't have a place to stay and they don't want to, you know, put six people in the RV, um, we'd love to welcome friends and family as well. So it's a great little place built back in 1948. We're trying to keep the vintage vibe with our um, Airstreams ranging from the late 50s to the mid 80s. And uh, that's kind of a little nutshell about us. <laughs> did I get everything? I, I think you nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> you, did. you did great. Awesome. And you rent kayaks and paddle boards for folks to, if they want to get on the lake. Absolutely. Yep. Th Deb, thank you for bringing that up. Yes, we have non-motorized water sports and we have restaurant, two or three, three restaurants and bars that you can actually paddle to from our beach. Yeah, so that awesome. makes Been there, done that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, as always, it's always a joy to get to talk to you two and I cannot wait to see you and get to hug you in September. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Great oh, seeing you. Sure down the days <laughs> all right take care all right y'all be good bye. great talk to you. you too guys bye that is such a cool couple i love them yes i do too and they really could be the mayor or the head of the chamber of commerce right. there in big right. fort because they're doing such a great job they really become part of the community mm -hmm. um and i loved how much information they shared with us for anybody that's ever going to montana which we highly recommend it's a beautiful mm -hmm. state um, and that is a beautiful area that they are in. So great information. We actually will get to see them again in the fall, which we're very excited about That's because right. I haven't seen them now for quite some time. So I'm excited to get to see them again. And why are we going to see them? Why will we be in that we area? We are going that area for our third annual Camp Carpe Diem. That's right. Which will be up in Kalispell, Montana, not too far from Big Fork. And Kalispell is just south of the... Uh, Glacier National Park, so we're really excited about that. Uh, Camp Carpe Diem is a long weekend of really fun biking, photography, um, hiking. brewery tours, hiking, just hanging around a campfire, talking with some really cool, fun people. I think that's one of the best parts about Camp Carpe Diem was the um, hanging around the campfire. We really got to know people. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves campfires. We do have s'mores. We make sure to have some fixings for you. Yep. Um, and so it's just great to have other people in your tribe, so to speak, that you can meet up with when you're on the road or just reach out to. Um, we do share a lot of information with one another while mm -hmm. we're hiking and biking and doing those fun things about RVing. One of the other fun things this year, something, a secret um, sneak peek, so to speak, um, we have a new sponsor, yeah. Meet Me There, Meet You There. RV Solar. Yep, yep. A couple. Uh, they're a fantastic couple. Speaking of fantastic couples, they're a great couple uh, based out of uh, Bend, Oregon, and they're going to be sponsoring and they'll be there and uh, we're going to have a solar symposium. I don't yep, know last call it year. That. Well, sure. Why not? <laughs> last year uh, it was really popular. We mm -hmm. just had a little conversation about solar and people really wanted to know more information. So yep. we decided to ask them and they are coming out. They will even be there a little bit early for mm -hmm. some consults with people. Oh, yeah. So more information coming on that. But um, yes, Tom yeah, and Ellie from Meet You There RV Solar. Yep. 
uh, will be around and able to help us with having some conversation about solar, which is always a popular yep. and I'm, topic. I'm excited about our, one of our other big sponsors too. Sacred Waters has come on as a sponsor, and they're going to be they're going to be hosting uh, an event. We'll get you more details yep. on that, but we're excited about another brewery that's come on board. Yep. Last year we had Oscar Blues. Yes, Oscar Blues is it was a our sponsor, brewery. and they did our opening um, party, and it yep. was so much fun. A lot of fun. It was so much fun. Some of the other things that we're going to be doing are many of the things that um, Josh and Britt mentioned in the video, and I think that's going to be. Lots of good surprises. Yep. Um, some fun pre and post. Well, maybe not, but post will be a nice hike. But I think there's going to be at least one pre. So you might want to get there at least a day early. And uh, we will hopefully also get into Glacier. Yep. It's yep. about 40 minutes, 30 minutes to the west entrance. So we're hoping that we can get up in there and, and go take some folks that want to go into Glacier. Yep. That'll be fun. I'm doing some research. Maybe we can find a nice hike with some beautiful vistas to photograph. And um, yeah, it's going to be a blast. It's be Can't fun. wait. So all of that at Camp Carpe Diem, which mm -hmm. again, we hope you guys will think about coming. I know we talk about it a lot, but that's because we think it's great fun. Yeah. It's all about community. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Absolutely. Excited. Okay. So, that's enough of that. Mm -hmm. uh, all the links will be in the show notes. And um, if you have any questions, go to campcarpediem.com. Or love to see you there. feel free to email one of us. We're mm -hmm. happy to um, answer any questions you have. Deborah That's at right. the virtual campground or Barry at the virtual campground. All right. So that's it for this week. Don't know exactly what we're going to talk about next week. Nope. but. It's a surprise for all of us. So just join us and find out. Hit that like button. Really appreciate you being here. Really appreciate you being part of this community. And until we can see you in person one day, we'll see you in the virtual campground. See you around the campfire.